Welcome back to Kevin Savage TV. My name is Kevin Savage, and today we are going to talk about uh, how to mix a track. Specifically, I'm going to walk you through my mix template, uh, give you a little brief overview, and then uh, if you check in the description box below, you will uh, see uh, instructions as to how you can download this uh, template yourself. So let's hop into Ableton. All right, so we are now in Ableton. This is a track from the Blue Sage album. Um, it's called uh, State of Confusion. It's been, it was one of our singles. We released this. This is a, uh, a collaboration of Ghetto Benny and Kevin Savage coming together under the name of Offbeat, not just Ghetto Benny and Kevin Savage. And um, it's one of my favorite tracks from the album. It's got a good swagger to it. So, uh, relatively simple track um, we got side chain we got some groups we got the synth group this is how i like to organize my tracks um i found that uh it's really hard for me to have a clear mind for mixing if my track is unorganized now some of you might be able to mix um while everything is looking like a mess um, but i can't so i like to organize things so i know exactly what's going on i tend to use the same color combinations all that good stuff um all of my templates i i have them built like this and that way as soon as i create a new track boom i can bring in the stems or i can start crafting already ready to go now in keep this in mind um, i typically tend to hide um, the mixing side of things so typically my um, mix templates especially if you download um, the mix template which if you look in the description box below there'll be instructions on how to get this exact mix template um, there, but everything will be, you know, these mixing pieces, which are, you know, for later, um, are grouped together. So that way I could just focus on crafting the track, organizing the track, arranging the track, um, changing up elements and, and stuff like that. Now, as you see, I tend to use a, a combination of MIDI as well as uh, audio. It really just depends on the track. In this case, it's a very simple melody um, that he sent me. Um, and I've broken it up between intro and uh, and and hook. Um, I have a I always have a side chain. I I believe in uh, ducking um, for the kick and the snare. Depends on how. Uh, not every each track is a little bit different on to what extent I do. Um, but I do like that. I I our music we tend to like to have the kick and the snare punch through obviously it depends on what you what kind of music you're making um, i have an fx group and sometimes there'll be nothing on these channels in this case i kept them here because i want to show you what my template would typically look like uh, drum group um, i like to have as you can see here my kick and the snare it to be as midi it's not always that way but i find that if i do it that way um, the, the beauty is if I make a change, let's say here, and I want to apply it across the board, I can also copy that directly and add it to the, uh, the side chain, um, and not have to worry about making small adjustments or, or changes. Um, and then I have my ambience and Vox and 808. In this case, my 808 is just a sample. I love cymatic samples. So in this case, I'm using a cymatic sample with some minor processing. Um, but most of it for this track, I just kept the raw sound. Um, obviously, I play around with kind of dipping it and stuff like that. Um, now, uh, something once I've created that foundation and I've really arranged the track in the way that I want it to be, I then get into the mix process. And so uh, back in the day, I used to mix directly from these groups, right? I basically send the send the groups, take the groups, send, send pieces of the groups to some sends. Um, I, I still obviously have sends. Every mix engineer uses stems. And then I would just ultimately they would all of the groups would just go to master now after working with a good friend of mine who is a grammy award-winning uh mix engineer and who's been doing it for decades um i kind of took some of his template as well as um like after i was watching a bunch of skrillex videos on how he like organizes and mixes um and i kind of synthesized my own template and um the key is rather than then just sending these groups to uh, the master and processing it there, what I do is I actually send them to buses. Um, so I've got these, this group, we'll um, ungroup it. 
all of these channels, all of these uh, these groups, excuse me, they go into these buses. Now, uh, something to note, I do have what's called stems here. In this case, I have it muted. And basically what the purpose of stems are is in this case, it, uh, the all of these channels are very low um, and they're monoed. And the idea is it's supposed to be a foundation. Now on this track, I didn't need it um, because it was a very open track. But sometimes when I have a more busy track, I will do stuff like that, especially if I'm spreading the sound really wide to really have a dry, narrow center. Um, now, we can ignore that in this case, but it's there just so you have an idea of, of what I'm doing with it. Um, but I send all these channels to these buses. Now, the beauty of these buses is the idea is we're creating this pyramid, right? Or this funnel, honestly. We have our, our main groups and then we funnel them down into buses and then funnel the buses into a premix bus and then to the, finally into the master. Um, now, the kicker is the drum bus because I'm already building, you know, if you look at these synth buses, Pro L2 is huge, and the goal is to really push the sound. This is kind of where I start to make things a lot louder um, while not losing any transients. And then, of course, cutting some bottom ends to make sure that the synth and the 808 fit within the track. Um, however, the drums, I want the drums to kind of sit on top. So what I do is I send, you know, everything to the buses, and then I send the synth bus, the effects bus, the Vox bus, ambient box, 808 bus, all that good stuff into a premix. Now, in this case, I don't have the side chain turned on for whatever reason, but um, but basically what happens is, is those, except for this drum bus, get sent to the premix, and so they kind of get combined at that point and then sent into the master, whereas the drums don't. The drums go straight to the master because I want those drums to live on top. It's very similar. I would do a very similar thing with like vocals as I would have a vocal bus here, but I probably, depend. obviously it depends, probably the ad libs or maybe some harmonies I would send to the premix, but the vocals themselves, because I want them to sit above everything else, I'm going to go ahead and send the, the signal from here directly to the master. All right. And then the master, I, I have a, just a kind of basic mastering chain um, a preset for Pro MB, uh, brick wall, some uh, some mastering here, a limiter to prevent everything from for anything from clipping. And then I like to add this um, this uh, glue compressor at the end. I just like how it sounds. Um, so that is ultimately I mean, my mix bus. You know, I spent years trying to figure this out, always feeling like I just wasn't quite getting it. Um, once I developed this template um, and worked with some professionals, um, I really noticed my mixes really going to like the next level and sounding really, really good. Um, and, and all it comes down to is a, a lot of work and a lot of kind of shaping it into a way that works for me. Now, this might not work for you, but to be honest, I know a lot of people who do use a very similar style template. Um, it just really organizes and and shapes the sound. Now, I have um, I have a, a number of sends because I like to send these uh, send I like to send pieces of these tracks up here. I don't really use any sends on my buses, but on the instruments I do. Uh, and so I send them into here. And a lot of this is uh, taken from the um, Kenny Beaks, Alec, Alex Tume uh, vocal template, which I'll probably do a little video on at some point. Um, and I keep them here because there's a, probably a chance where I'll have vocals on this and and um, I could do it, I guess, in another template. But if I want to bring the channels right in here, I don't want to have to add these later. And then it allows me to use the same reverbs. Keep in mind, Ableton limits the number of sends. So sometimes you just kind of have to combine some stuff together and, and make it work. Um, a short reverb, long reverb, some delay. Uh, I have some compressors here and this helps kind of add, helps things punch through. I wasn't using these at one point. And then I, my, my, uh, my coworker was like, yo, these things aren't cutting, like what's going on. And then I realized I just needed to add that extra compression and, and, and push, um, as, as, uh, sends. And so those really helped. And then rectifier send is, it's like a, um, it adds a little bit of uh, grit to, uh, like distortion to a track. Um, so that is my mix template. It is 
what I use for every single track. If you want to see me actually using it in real time, um, <laughs> there are a lot, uh, but go watch the live streams. They were on Twitch, but I've uploaded them to the YouTube channel. Scroll through them, check out what I'm doing. I actually utilize the template right there right here in those videos. So check those out for sure. They're like, some of them are like a couple of hours, others are like eight hours, um, but there's a few of them that you could watch and all of them show me how I show how I'm using uh, this mix template to create and shape the Ghetto Benny album. So, um, you know, that is a, uh, a thing to definitely check out. Now, uh, something to keep in mind, um, I found at least in my buses, the, the goal of stuff like synth and the 808 and whatnot is to make things, these tracks louder. And I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't explain a little bit on that side. So basically I found that over time, now obviously this can depend on the track itself, but, um, I've always tried to have the synth bus, at least on the Pro L2, and I always use Pro L2 because it allows me to monitor how much how much um, luffs I'm getting um, is between 14 and 17 decibels, or negative 14, negative 17. Um, the 808, I try to keep it between negative eight and negative 11, and then drums, it, I play with it to kind of make it work, but typically it is between like negative 11 and negative 14. And what that does is that really loudens the stuff. Now for Vox and Ambient, that's all in taste. I will adjust it based on the track, based on what the track needs, kind you know, all that stuff. And, you know, I'll do a car test and, and check that stuff out. Um, but check this out. Like this is, this is the difference that it makes, right? So if I play Play the, the synth bus. Like that's a huge difference. Now, granted, I cut the decibels up top, but I want to bring it back up, but also kind of fill it all in. So I have this Pro L2. Right? Or the 808 bus right over here, which. And another thing to note, you know, as I was talking about this, make it louder. You can hear it get louder and, uh, and brighter with this particular uh, preset. And honestly, like it, it, super simple things, very basic, but just those little pieces, just, just give it that extra, oomph, give it that extra feeling and body that I was looking for. So definitely check this out. Um, the script for box below is where you can look at the instructions on how to download those. I really hope that you check this out, that you download this and uh, play around with it, maybe implement it in your next project and let me know how it works for you. Um, leave those comments in the in the uh, comments below. Let me know if it works, if there's a, a particular way you do things. Um, I want to hear from you. So let me know. Uh, check out this instructions to download it for free and um, you know, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.